are going to have a look at compound inequalities. Okay, so what does a compound inequality look like? Okay, compound inequality looks like this. X is less than 4, but there might be something else like 2. Now, this time, we don't just read from left to right. We can also read from right to left. We're going to start with the value x. x is smaller than 4. That is, if I read from this direction to that direction, x is less than 4. But if I read from, from starting from x going to the left, I'll read x is bigger than 2. Now what this means is it's true at the same time. So x is, can be any number that's smaller than 4, but bigger than 2, or equal to 2. What, what values can x, for example, take? True and variation. Guys, you are making a mistake by always giving me integers. Okay? Because in your mind, you're just thinking it can be 2 and 3. x can be any value between 2 and 4. Unless we say x is an element of integers. In other words, x is only whole numbers. I didn't say that. That means x can be any value. x can be 2. x can be 2 comma 1. x can be... Can it be 7? No, 7 is too big. Can it be 1? Why not? It says it's bigger or equal to 2. x must be bigger or equal to 2. That limits me. I can't go lower than 2. Okay, you get it. Okay. So that's how I would read a compound inequality. Now in a compound inequality, I can do similar things that I would do in a linear in equation. Okay. For example, or actually in any inequality, if I give you this, x is less than 7. And I want to do something. I now want to say, okay, if x is less than 7, what will happen if I double x? So if I multiply this with a 2, then 2x will be less than what? 14. 14. Because I have to multiply both sides. So in other words, 2x is less than 14. Or, if I wanted to look at, what about x plus 3? What will x plus 3 be less than? 10. Yeah. 10. How do you get 10? You added 3 to the 7. I added 3 to 7. So remember what I had initially. Initially I had that x is less than 7. So if I add a 3 on the left hand side, I must also add a 3 on the right hand side. You see? So plus 3 here, plus 3 there. So that means that if I added a 3, it would be less than 10. Because x is less than 7, then x plus 3 must be less than 10. You see, it's the same thing as a normal, normal inequality. Oh, sorry, uh, equation. Okay. Now, what about a compound inequality? For example, in a com compound inequality, I'll have something like x is less than a number, 2, and x is bigger than 4. No. This one can't be, this is very good that it comes out. This one can't be smaller, bigger than, than this side. Because if, if you cancel the x, if you don't look at, at this inside, this must still be 2. 4 is not smaller than 2. You see? So this number here must always be smaller than this number there if these signs are so less than signs. Can you be a negative? Yeah, why not? Give me a negative number then. Negative 4. Okay, let's make it negative 4. Perfect. 
Okay? Now what will happen if I multiply this interior, this center of the compound? What will happen if I multiply that with it too? Then this side will be smaller than 2 times 2. So actually all I'm doing is everywhere I'm multiplying with a 2. So this side will be smaller than 4. On the other side I'll have negative 4 times 2 gives me negative 8. So what you be for you're multiplying a negative number with a positive number. Oh, sorry, so I thought it was squared. No, it's not squared. Let me quickly show you the one thing that's different when I work with inequalities. The one thing with inequalities that's different is that when I have a value like x is less than 3. The moment I multiply with a negative, so what number can x for example be? Sorry? Okay. What did you say? Give me a number less than 3. Any number? 2. So 2 is less than 3. Is that true? Okay, let's multiply both sides with a negative 1. Multiply negative 1 and on this side multiply with a negative 1. What answer do I get now? Minus 2. Minus 2 and on the other side? Minus three. Negative 3. What sign belongs between these two? Greater than. A greater than. Can you see why? Do you also, notice? I I know do you notice? that negative 2 is a bigger number than negative 3. Why? Because look at the number line. On the number line, which one is the most to the right? Negative 2. It's negative 2. Negative 3 is on this side. When something is to the left, it's smaller. Okay. So negative 2 is greater than... Do you see the sign changed? Also, so when you multiply with a negative number, the sign changes. When you multiply with a negative number, the sign changes. In the compound inequality today, that if I have a compound inequality like this, not unless I'm multiplying with a negative, I can do anything. Anything. So for now, let's not multiply with a negative. Let's just look at everything else that we can do. Okay? I can add as long as I add the same thing everywhere. I can subtract as long as I subtract the same thing everywhere. I can multiply or divide as long as I multiply or divide everywhere. I can square or cube, or quadruple, no, not really quadruple, as long as I do it everywhere, which means I can take a square root as long as I do it everywhere. Okay. So if I tell you that x squared is smaller than 16, but it's bigger than 4, I want to know more about x itself. Then you can say, okay, I can take a square root here, a square root there, and a square root there. So I can say x is less than 4, and x is bigger than 2. You see? It's just to simplify. It's to simplify. That's exactly. So now I know the value x. This unknown is somewhere between 2 and 3, 4. Because its square is somewhere between 4 and 16. Okay. Now, granted, it could have also been negative numbers. Okay. Because when I square it. But uh, for the purposes of what we're going to learn now, 
ਗੰਦੀ ਰੁਤੇ